Okay, so now uh, once we have uh, fooling sets and uh, and we know what they mean, we can now argue that there is exponential gap between uh, n phase and d phase in their size in some cases. And here is the concrete example. This is the language of uh, binary string such that there is a one in the fourth location from the end of the string. So the NFA is very simple, right? You just uh, guess when you stay in the beginning until uh, you get uh, the one that is the, in the fourth location, and then you just move a uh, three location to the end, and that's it, right? This is the NFA. It has four states, it's very simple. The DFA on the other hand essentially have to remember the last four bits, so you're going to get 16 states, and you get the, the wonderful creature on the top. Okay, so let's prove it formally. So the claim is that, let's look at language L of K, which is the language of all binary strings, such that the, the K bit from the end is a, is a one, and we already saw that an NFA can accept this with K plus one states. And the claim is, of course, that any uh, DFA that accepts this language has at least two to the K states. And the proof is, of course, uh, immediate, right? Because uh, let's look on the set of strings, which are all binary strings of length K, right? And the claim is that this set, this set has two to the K st strings. If indeed this is a fooling set, they are all, uh, all the, the strings in this set are distinguishable. That means that any uh, finite automata, DFA that accepts this string, must have two to the K states because we proved the lemma that says that the side of a fooling set is a lower bound on the number of states in a DFA accepting the language. So we just need to argue why this is indeed a fooling set. And the proof is easy, right? Because take two strings, X and Y, from this set that have uh, K bits, right? Since there are two different strings, there must be a bit that they disagree on. Let's assume this is this bit, right? So we're going to pad it with. Uh, we're going to pad uh, this with a suffix string, such that this bit that they disagree with. Let's see, this is one and zero such that the bit that disagree with becomes the kth bit, right? So if this is location i, this is going to be, this string is going to be length k minus i, so we can add it, right? And then uh, if you feed, if you uh, pad, let's assume this is all zeros, it doesn't really matter. So if you uh, add to x and y this uh, string of, of zeros, let's call this w, if you uh, add, you know, concatenate W to both X and Y. In one case, they would accept. In the other case, they would, it wouldn't accept. So as such, those two strings are uh, distinguishable, which means that F is indeed the fooling set with two to the K states, which implies that indeed this, uh, any DFA for this language need two to the K states. Okay, and this is the... Okay, uh, maybe uh, a little bit more about how to pick a fooling set. So it it takes some some thinking. It's not uh, completely obvious. Um, generally speaking, you usually are looking for prefixes of the current of the language itself. So it's usually very convenient to just you know look on the language and kind of uh, ask yourself when does the behavior changes. Uh, so you have to play around with enough examples to, to get the feeling to how to do it. Um, and that's it for now.